I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow believers of this faith. Shalom to the hopefully elect, shalom to the elect, peace to you. So, I want to go back on this video. I was going back and forth with this guy, and that's kind of a no no on these scoffers, but. It was pertaining to wearing fringes. So I figured this was a good video to go into and kind of sum this thing up. Lord's will, I'll get through it speedily, but, you know, edifying, right? It says, um, he says, uh, he says, you brothers in GMS are scared and weak. <laughs> your fringes, to wear your fringes out in the public, to the work, etc. This is hilarious. And I did a video we went straight in on the um, Israelite groups confounded on the rape doctrine. This is what they result to when they can't defend the video that I, you know, that we put out. So, okay, fine. He says, uh, we're scared to wear fringes. I said, well, fringes are not going to save you. Right. And he says, um, and I also went on to say that there's wicked men that wear fringes. What does that mean? The Lord did, the Lord didn't need fringes need us to wear fringes right he didn't need us uh he didn't need us to wear fringes so i said since you're so faithful why don't you wear your phylacteries and uh to feeling you know why don't you wear the other things that go along with the laws now you remember if you know any history or even know the bible in general you know you will know that yahweh came for what to deliver us from certain things like as far as we didn't have to uh do the sacrifices well let me say to change certain things we don't have to do the sacrifices. we don't have to be dunked in the water we understand now that it's beyond just the law it's faith because a whole lot of people can write and say hey i believe in the law i believe in the law this is why yahweh said uh, many speak sweetly with their lips but their hearts are far from me and these people wore garments. And then you had the, the so-called uh, Pharisees, the wicked ones, who will add things into the law, right? Now, I'm not going to say that, honestly, you want to wear shirt fringes, then you wear shirt fringes, but that's not in there. Yeah, how wish I wore a garment down to the foot? So now you decide to cut the fringe in half, put some fringes on it, and make it a fascist statement. Yep, that's what it is. It's become a fascist statement. You're running out here and boasting and saying, hey, I'm an Israelite, and I don't have no problem with it. That's what you're saying, I, you know, which is good, you're an Israelite, but you're running out here boasting in the law. Like your fringes are going to change things. The Lord is going to love you more because you got fringes. But this is why you guys don't believe in the MOTB, the mark. Right? Because it's going to require faith, not your garments. Right? And what is the first commandment? What is the second commandment? We're going to go over here to Revelation, what he quoted as well. Now, Matthew 10 to 16 says, Be wise as a serpent and harmless as doves. In so many scriptures that go with this particular topic, um, we need to see you wear your phylacteries. We need to see that. We need to see everything according to the law, right? We need to see you guys do this. But now you guys are all so much about the law, but you won't call on the name of the Lord. That's another issue, right? You, you're you not, you claim, some of you claim we're in the New Testament, but there's flames walking around. Nope, you can't do nothing about that. Come on, man. You guys are making it what you want to make it. He said, for your information, I met a GMS brother. I had asked him about the fringes. He told me that uh, his elder told him that it was not wise. As I read, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as doves. We understand. <laughs> we understand that according to scripture, you will not be saved by the clothes that's, that you're wearing. You will not be saved by your garment, right? your half shirt garment with a couple of fringes. You will not be saved that way. But you guys don't even teach the upcoming prophecy. 
the MOTB. You don't teach that. And you know what's going to happen? Just like the guy of IUIC, because this is an IUIC follower, he took the thing, and I guarantee you, since they say they wear their garments all the time, he had his fringes on when he lined up to take the three-pointer. You know if he took the first one, he took the second and third uh, three-point, three-pointer, he was on that basketball court taking them three-point shots <laughs> with his fringes. Anyway, let's go into some scripture. Uh, he quoted Revelation 22 and 14. Uh, but anyway, he says we're scared, right? Before I get there, let's go to, uh, since we're scared, let's get a scripture on that. Uh, going into that, because this guy says, let's go to John 8 and 59. Um, if you can read this whole thing, how to came at Yahawashah. It says, Then they took up stones to cast him at him. But Yahawashah hid himself and went through the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So would you call Yahawashah scared? See, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time for war, a time for peace, so forth. There's a time, you know, where you're going to need your spiritual garments, you know, to, uh, to endure in these last days. I guarantee you, your garment with a border of blue is not going to save you. Because if that was the case, everybody that wore their garments with the border of blue would be saved, wouldn't they? Right? Uh, you had Judas Iscariot. <laughs> right? So anyway, Matthew, Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments okay that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city so this is what you see these words commandments and this is what they read this is what they read which is what they read but they do not go into the words they don't understand what they read now of course you keep the law statutes and commandments to the best of your ability the first commandment number one now the question is, are you keeping the first commandment and loving the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength if you're wearing a garment but don't consider the faith? Absolutely not. You're not loving the Lord. Because the Lord really, Yahweh, right? It was our custom. It was our tradition. And this is what we wore. And we still do. But we said in this captivity, and this Bishop Nate says in this captivity, you can't have but one wife, Right? But in the time when we're not in our captivity, you can have multiple wives, which he lied on that because in Egypt, the men, the men still had wives. That's how, that's how he was multiplying. But he said, whenever we're in captivity, we can't have but one wife. It's amazing. But you can wear all the garments you want, right? You can throw on the borders of blue with these shirt fringes and run around, you know, run around, you know, and look like an actual fringe group. Right, you working in a restaurant and you got your you got you got your fringes on. Be wise as a serpent. Superman didn't fly all over the place and put his hand on his hip and say, "Look, I'm Superman." Even when he went into work, this is captivity. But for some reason, he doesn't believe that we can have more than one wife. But because we're in captivity, but we can wear the fringes every day. You know, it's just not wise. It, it definitely isn't wise. But anyway, that word here, commandment, is G1785. Uh, it means the order, a command, a charge, a precept, injunction, that which is prescribed by one's person. The other is the prescribed rule or coordinates, which is a thing is done. Now, when you really go into the old English, which I pulled up, that word commandment wasn't there, by the way. It was just describing. Let's go and it says, blessed is they that watching uh, their stoolists that the power of him be in the tree of life. Now, when you read the other translations, it says, blessed are them that watch their robes, right? And it'll say some that wash their robes. 
So we understand that this is not technically getting some laundry detergent and washing your robes, right? This is why Yahweh Shah came. Yahweh Shah came for the elect, but it covers us uh, with, with the mercy. This proves that we're not in the new covenant because he says he will not drink new until we, he sits uh, the wine until he sits with uh, the elect in the kingdom. So this is not new. This is not a new covenant. This is the covering. This is where we need the covering. We can't walk around. If you got a, a, um, a particular job and you go sit in there and you say, oh, well, I ain't scared. If we were scared, if we wasn't scared, if we were scared, we wouldn't be going out on the hedges every week. So this is a boasting thing. This doesn't mean that just because you don't wear your fringes and we wear our fringes down to the foot. And in my profession, I can't work with no fringes, no, no long garment dangling and hanging. Right. Anyway, um, now we look at that word, blessed he that watcheth his stoolist or, or robe. They actually come from the word like what you would see stool. Like where you sit on a stool or your actual, you know, stools. Um, when you go into when you go into that that word, let's see see what it means. Let's go into that word real quick. That word actually means uh from the Middle English stool. Uh, it means a chair, a seat, a throne. From post-West Germanic, chair. Right? It's like when you see a stool, right? A, a seat. So basically it means your throne. So it says, blessed is the one who, and you'll see the other translation that says, washes, his, washes their robes. And some will say their stools. Right, their stool that you sit, um, pretty much, pretty much it. So you got to get to understanding what that's talking about. That's why the scripture says, "Awake, awake, put on that beautiful garment." It didn't mean specifically some pretty, beautiful, glorious garment. Now you can do that if that's what you want to do. Depends on your spirit. But beyond garments comes faith. Right? Let's go to Romans. And then we'll get a little, I'll read a little bit on this too. Romans 3 and 27. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by the law? By what law? Of works? Nay, but, but the law of faith. So it's going to be bigger than you wearing your, your garments. And it goes on to say that we conclude we're not justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Right, so it, it is a balance. You must follow the law um, and do to the best of what you can do. Right, you follow the law, but at the you know at the end of the day, you if you can't, if you got a particular job, you're getting on the buses, right? You carry that garment. You carry that spiritual garment within. Okay, and this kind of behavior makes you like a uh, some form of a rebel Israelite. You are trying to bring attention to you. You're trying, uh, you know, you're trying to make yourself look like the tough guy when Yahweh is the, is the tough one, right? He don't need you to be the tough guy. Like, look at me, I'm wearing my garment while you guys are afraid. You know how simple that sounds, man? where we're afraid to wear garments when we put on garments and walk down the street we go i mean when we go into the camps we go to our camps we throw on our garments and we're standing there with a camera on us for all to see but somehow we're afraid come on man matthew 23 and 1 this make yahweh shout to the multitude and to his disciples saying the scribes and pharisees sit in moses seat all there for whatsoever they they uh uh they bid you observe that observe and do but do not after their works for they say and do not these are the guys that don't want to call on the name of the lord say you could call your habasha your play yogurt and jalapeno peppers these are those guys 
that cut the, the long garments in half and put some fringes on it, make it a fashion statement. We understand younger guys do that. But they make a fashion statement, right? And still be smoking cigarettes, still committing adultery, putting fringes on their cars and their dogs and their pets. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders. This is an example. Telling every brother to put on garments, no matter where you work, you can work at the air, you know, at the, um, the airport where they have like particular task force there, man. You're putting people, uh, uh, lives in, or let me say their careers or whatever in jeopardy because you want to look like the tough fringe, fringe guys, you know, the Lord got you. That's, you know, now you could say, hey, well, you put on the fringes because you got to have faith. Well, you know what? We can walk through the shadow of the valley of death, right? And a fringe ain't going to save you. And they love the uppermost rooms and the feast and the chief seats of the synagogue. Yeah, these are men with fringes. And greetings in the markets to be called men, rabbi, rabbi. Right? So, the bottom line is, this is what Paul was dealing with. You had Israelites saying that they're not wearing their garments. <laughs> anyway, let's read a little bit on this. I don't want to make this too long. It says, let me see if I can find it. It says, a review of the consequences of the process justi justification how does it affect the pretensions of the of the Jew? It shuts them out uh, by laying stress no longer on works, which were the proper fulfillment of the law, of the first law, as it stood, but upon faith. Faith is the true medium of justification, and faith belongs as much to the Gentile as to the Jew is of Israelites. For faith is the appointed appointed. Faith is the appointed means by which all mankind, Israelites, will be justified. And they will also be justified before the same tribunal, or whether they are of the circumcision or not, uh, to, the, to the point that we're going to be tried and we're going to need faith. We're not going to need garments. It is our heritage. It is our so you know tradition, if you want to call it that. And we go out and teach. And we wear our borders of blue. But to run around with a if y'all go if you guys gonna do it right, wear the long garments, man. I'll be seeing some of the IUIC. Why don't y'all just walk around in long garments, the big combat boots, and march up and down the street, go down like you went to the Barclay Center, and this man went and gave money to some uh Muslims or something. What are you guys doing it for, man? You claim you're doing it for the Lord. The Lord don't need you guys to do that. And this also proves that we ain't in that time. You ain't in the time of Jericho. <laughs> you're going to march around and stand around, and then you get up and leave and go back home with your garments. Anyway, you guys are going to find that uh, men of the Lord are not going to need a bunch of garments, I mean, uh, uh, garments to wear every day, all day, you know, if if that's what y'all you guys do, and that's what you do, but you gonna come uh, sit sit here and call us scared? What are we scared about? We out every week. Wear your phylacteries, man. Go go the whole way. Go the whole nine. There's many other things that come with the commandments. But this is why I say it's a fashion statement because they'll just wear a little part. They'll put a design on the front. I U I C. Come on, man. United in Christ. First of all, Israel is not united in Christ. And Israel is not united amongst one another. Where you get that from? That's all I have on that show. On.